I always liked Super Mario 64 when I was a kid. I remember playing it at my aunt's house all the time. Well, one day a pop-up appeared out of nowhere as I was watching gameplay footage on YouTube. I was a little startled and was about to close the window until I realized that it was a website showing a mint condition copy of Super Mario 64 for sale. There was a picture and everything. I usually don't trust these things, but the feeling of nostalgia overpowered me and I wanted to buy it. The whole business was peculiar, seeing as how the owner of the game wanted the buyer to send an envelope containing $10 to the address on the site instead of using something like PayPal. What made things even more strange was that when I tried to gain access to the website, I wrote down the URL after encountering problems with the game. The page was nowhere to be found. A few days after the $10 was mailed, I got a package containing the new copy of the game. The first thing I noticed when I opened the small box was that the official sticker with Mario flying in the air was apparently peeled off or something, and in its place was a piece of duct tape with Mario written crudely on it with permanent marker. I felt a little ripped off, but as long as the game worked, I didn't care. I got out my Nintendo 64 and put the cartridge in. The screen turned on with the familiar Mario face that you could stretch and twist aimlessly. I remember laughing all the time at the results as a kid and decided to mess around for old times sakes. I moved the cursor over to Mario's ear and pulled it to elephant proportions. I was about to do the same with the other ear when the TV suddenly produced loud static. Mario's head started deforming and twisting in ways that I didn't even know were possible for the model. Random sound effects from the game started playing along with the static. As all of this was occurring, I could hear a faint voice whispering in Japanese. The voice was stammering and whimpering. I immediately shut off the game and tried again. I didn't even bother with the Mario head this time. I just selected a new file and started playing. When I selected the file, the game skipped the opening monologue by Peach in the courtyard outside. Mario was just placed right inside the castle. Creepier still, Bowser didn't say anything either. I tend to ignore it and played anyway. However, I noticed that there was no music, just dead silence. There weren't even any toads around to talk to. I could only enter what was the bomb bomb battlefield and the other doors wouldn't even respond to my button commands. The portrait to Babon Battlefield wasn't even the usual picture. It was just a stark white canvas. I was still trying to convince myself that these were just minor glitches and that they wouldn't affect the gameplay at all. Once I entered the portrait, the image suddenly went from a blank canvas to the lethal lava land painting you know, the slightly unsettling image of the flame with the evil smile. Yeah, that's when I started getting really suspicious. The mission select menu came up and yet another weird detail was present. Instead of the big babam on the submit, the mission was called Turn Back. I have no idea what drove me to press A, but I did. The level seemed normal. Everything was how I remembered it. I thought I could finally enjoy my favorite childhood game, but then I saw him. Luigi. I was absolutely shocked. He was never in this game. His model wasn't even a simple Mario palette swap. He looked like a completely original model. Luigi just stood there until I tried to approach him. He started running at unexpected speeds. I followed suit and went through the level. Strange things started happening as I pursued him. Each time I picked up a coin, the enemies and the music would get slower, and the scenery would get darker in color and more morbid. It gradually kept getting worse until a fifth coin was collected, and then the music just stopped. The enemies lay down on the ground like they were dead. I was seriously freaked out, but I kept chasing Luigi. I went up the hill, no cannonballs rolled trying to knock me over. I wasn't even surprised at this point. Luigi was just out of my sight as I ran. Once I reached the submit, I saw yet another object out of place. A small cottage was all that was seen on top of the hill. Luigi was nowhere to be found. The cottage was certainly odd looking for a Mario game. It was old, plain, and broken down. 
Regardless of my fears at that moment, I had Mario enter the cottage. As soon as the door closed, a disturbing picture of a hang Luigi immediately popped up along with a very frightening scare chord. It sounded like a violin screech accompanying with a loud piano banging. Mario fell to his knees and sobbed for roughly five minutes. Then the screen irised out. I returned to the castle. Mario just slumped out of the painting. The image switched from the lethal lava land portrait to Luigi hanging himself. The room was different this time. It was now a small hallway. Toads with blank expressions and white robes lined the sides of the hallway. There was another painting at the opposite end that just completely and utterly scared me. It was a picture of my family, but it wasn't a photo from the time Super Mario 64 was released. It was a very, very recent photo. I remembered posing for it last weekend. I reached for the on and off switch from the Nintendo 64, but there was no way I was going to play this anymore. However, when I flipped the switch, the game was still on. I flipped it back and forth, but to no avail. I tried unplugging the whole system, but it never left the screen. I was still able to control Mario. I couldn't just leave it on forever, so I kept playing. I went to the photo of my family and jumped in. There was only one mission, of course. This one was called Run, Don't Walk. I selected the mission, and I heard Mario say his signature, let us go The level started in a flooded hallway with platforms floating in the water. Mario landed on one of those, and... The camera turned to show what was behind. A silent, black void was slowly approaching Mario, and it didn't even look like anything. It didn't even look like finished graphics. Just a giant, blocky, black blob. I started jumping from platform to platform with no goal in sight. I kept running, the darkness slowly but surely gaining speed. This kept going on for what felt like hours. I was really doubting there would ever be an end. Mario just kept on going in circles. Finally, the black blob void thing caught up with Mario and enveloped him in darkness. He didn't even scream or resist at all. It just consumed him. Mario fell out of the painting and back into the castle. I lost one of my three lives. The room was different now. Some of the toes were gone and the painting looked very different. My family and I were in the same positions, but our bodies were partially decomposed. It looked too realistic to be photoshopped. It looked more like someone just took our dead bodies and posed them. Regardless, I jumped into the painting again. Mario was in a small room, but there was only one mission available. It was called I'm Right Here, spelled just like that. I selected the mission and prepared for the worst. Mario landed in a small, dark room. There, n there was no visible way out. The room was empty except for a piano in the corner. I knew what that meant. I was stuck in there with the mad piano. I approached it, and it started chasing me as always. There was no way to damage it, and I had no choice but to let Mario take damage. When he lost all of his health, the usual death animation didn't happen. Mario just got mauled by the piano. He fell as his blood and guts spilled on the floor, and the camera panned to a top view of his corpse. A distorted version of the merry-go-round music from the Big Boo's haunt level played as the screen slowly transitioned from the in-game shot to a photorealistic sketch of Mario's body in the same view as the shot. It was unsettling. I was crying softly as I gazed at the image. I lost another life. The photo of my family was shown again. We were even more rotten than before. The view zoomed into the painting like I was warping again. I was greeted with the shot of Peach's castle from the outside. The castle was crumbling in ruins. The fields were on fire. The sky was pitch black. Bowser's laugh played on a loop in the background as children mockingly chanted, You couldn't save her. This went on for a long time until a close-up of Peach's face accompanied by an extremely loud screech interrupted the loop without notice. Peach's mouth was wide open as if she was screaming. Her eyes were just empty black holes.
Suddenly, I was back in the hallway as Mario once again was ejected out of the painting. Now all the toads were gone, and me and my family looked positively repulsive. Maggots were wrangling around in holes of our flesh. Guts were spilling out of our bodies. My dad's eyeball was hanging loose from its socket. It was too much for me to bear, but something still urged me to trudge on. I jumped into the painting with only one life remaining. This time, there was no name for the mission, just a blank space where the title would be. I selected the mission, and Mario landed on a very small island in the middle of the ocean. There was only one sign, and it only read, Dive. I did just that, and I entered the water. The ocean was dark and empty. There were no fish. I wasn't even able to see anything in the water besides Mario. I swam downwards, and I kept going for quite some time, yet Mario never ran out of breath. I counted roughly 10 minutes of swimming until I decided to go back up, and just as Mario turned around, it came. A huge, and I mean huge, Unagi the Eel came out of nowhere and swallowed Mario whole. I was dumbfounded. I, it went by so fast that I wasn't even sure what I saw. The game over screen never showed up. All that happened was a fade out. The photo of my family and I was shown again, but we were just plain skeletons now. Once again, it looked very real, and I couldn't move the camera at all. It just stayed focused on the picture. I shut off the game and I turned it on again. I chose my file and it went to the skeleton photo of my family. I tried this about three more times before giving up. I desperately wanted to stop, but some force kept me from walking away. I decided to select the only other save file. The camera once again focused on the skeleton picture, but this time, they were in a completely different position, as if they were a completely different family. Okay, so this is apparently the second Mario Creepypasta that I have narrated, and, you know, I think it's good that, you know, we get the bad ones out of the way first, because, you know, there are some truly spectacular Mario Creepypastas out there, like, um, for an example, the Mario one, where Mario, uh, where the player encounters a Super Mario World hack, and there's also another Mario Creepypasta that I like, um, uh, uh, I hate you. Um, that that one's also a pretty good one. But but for this creepypasta, it's in the middle. It, it's not good, but it's not bad either. It's well, it's not terrible. It's still pretty close to being bad, close to being below average. But it's not the worst creepypasta I've ever read. I think one of the worst creepypastas I've read would be Clockwork. Your time is up, or maybe Sonic's Pentagram. I, I think those two are the worst. So the worst creepypastas, you know, I've ever read. But, anyways, for this creepypasta, why don't I find this creepypasta to be very good? Well, it's because of the fact that there are a lot of cliches. I feel like I've seen a lot of the, a lot of these uh, tropes in other Mario creepypastas that are, you know, much better, like in Mario or, you know, there's also, you know, cliches where the video game characters, uh, the protagonist's friend and or the, the um, video game character that you're playing as, you know, ends up killing themselves. Um, they're crying, making sad faces. It's all very cliched as hell. But I think that the worst part of this story for me would probably be the picture of the per the, per the protagonist's family. That is very stupid. I, I basically don't like that because of the fact that, you know... It really takes out the credibility of the story, and it makes the story not very good and not very interesting to go back to. And another issue that I have with the story would be the fact that, you know, if the player were to be actually skilled enough, I'm pretty sure that they could probably rip the ROM out of the, out of the cartridge that they got and probably upload it on the internet. Um, and if that were the case, I'd pretty much love to play it. Um... Like, the issue with that is, you know, there are no screenshots, there, there are no pictures being taken from the television screen or whatever. So it's obvious that, you know, this creepypasta is fake. And it's not very good. But with that being said, what do you guys think of this story and what will you do to change it to make it better? Um, my final rating of this story would be a 
5.5 .5 out of 10. It's pretty, it's pretty close to being below average, but there are some things that save it, you know, and it, that being that it was knocked back by some pretty stiff competition. Anyways, um, this is probably going to be the last review that I'm going to be doing for Curry Pasta until the month of Macombre Marathon is over because, you know, I just feel like the reviews end up taking a very long time to construct and, you know, I'm not very good at, you know, coming up with uh, improvisation on the fucking spot. That and I've also been really busy for the past couple months, so... Ugh. Anyways, this is Shadow Blazer and I am out. Hello everyone, Shadow Blazer here. Hope you guys enjoyed this narration. I hope I didn't scare you guys too much while watching. If not, feel free to hit the subscribe button and notification bell to know when I upload. If you have a suggestion for which creepypasta you want me to narrate, feel free to give me some suggestions in the comments section below. I'm always open for your suggestions. Anyways, this is Shadow Blazer, and I'll see you soon. Ha 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 ha!